properties of steel. In the laboratory furnace, we see how steel can be given special characteristics by mixing with it small amounts of other metals. Steel can be made extremely hard by adding a small amount of chromium. The chromium is added to the melted steel. After careful blending, the mixture is poured into a mold and then scientifically brought to normal room temperature. The hardness of steel to which chromium has been added is measured by denting it. A small, extremely hard ball is forced down into the steel test specimen. The size of the dent or impression is measured under the microscope. The smaller the dent, the harder the steel. A microscope isn't needed to compare the size of the dents made in hard chromium steel and ordinary steel. Some uses of steel require it to be extremely strong, able to withstand tremendous strains. The strength of metals is measured by pulling test pieces apart in a powerful machine. The dial of the testing machine shows the tremendous force used in pulling apart a piece of plain steel. More and more force is used. The steel stretches under the load and then finally snaps. More than 13,000 pounds of force are required. Plain steel can be made stronger by adding nickel in addition to a small amount of chromium. Now let's see what happens when the chromium nickel steel is tested in the stretching machine. The bar breaks. Our chromium nickel steel test piece is more than twice as strong as common steel. Great heat weakens common steel. But some steels today have to stand up under great heat and still keep all their good qualities. Steel can be given an ability to resist great heat by the addition of a little chromium and also some silicon, the element which is found in ordinary white sand. Under constant bending or vibration, all ordinary steels have a tendency to become fatigued or tired. In the laboratory, the fatigue strength of metals is measured by placing a test bar in a machine, which in a short time duplicates the effect of years of use. By adding a little bit of nickel and a small amount of a metal called molybdenum, plain steel can be made to stand up for years and be practically tireless. For certain conditions, a steel is needed that will be very hard on the outside and tough on the inside. A little carbon added to the outside of steel gives it a hard surface and leaves the inside tough and strong. This process is called carburizing or case hardening. By special photography, we can see what happens to a piece of steel when it is completely surrounded by small particles of carbon bearing material. When heated, the steel slowly soaks up the carbon to form an extremely hard surface. This adding, mixing, and combining of plain steel with friendly little fractions of other metals to improve its qualities is called alloying. Chromium, nickel, silicon, molybdenum, and vanadium, tungsten, and manganese, all these tough friends have improved the usefulness of steel. But all of these different alloy steels must be put through a process called heat treating. The alloy steel is heated very carefully, heated until it glows, and then quenched or cooled quickly in oil or water. The steel is then reheated at a lower temperature. This is called drawing or tempering. The heat treatment brings out all of the good qualities of each of the alloy steel. 